So I want to show you how you can make a cable that looks like this. So I wanted to use this in one of my own characters and I figured I'd just make a video out of it. So the detail itself, you can model it however you want it to be. I actually want to create something that's a little less rounded out, you know, probably won't look too much like a cable, but it's going to look cool. I want to keep this uh, squared out shape going on. So we're going to do this. that and I'm just trying to come up with some sort of detail again this might be a little too complex for what we're trying to do but you know me YOLO oops There we go. Let's apply auto smooth and add a modifier. So the first modifier we're gonna apply, actually let's just apply it to everything. <laughs> so that way any change we make is gonna show up in all directions. So I'm gonna do something like this. Let's bridge these faces, excellent, cool. Now, the next step is to add an array modifier. So modifier, array, and let's make sure it goes upwards. So that means setting this to zero and setting Z to one. And that still throws me off the fact that Z is the up axis, but whatever. Let's set this to, I don't know, 20 and make it a lot smaller. Excellent, let's hide these pieces because they're getting in the way. Now, to start making this look like some actual uh, cable, we need to create a curve. So shift A, curve and path. And it's hard to see it, but if I press G and start moving it, you can see it was actually hidden by uh, the X axis. So I'm just gonna press R, control and rotate it. So it's pointing upwards. Awesome. And let's make this a little bit smaller. Cool. All we have to do now is apply one last modifier. So let's go to the form curve. You see it's all the way to the bottom. Let's actually close these. Okay, so just pick the curve we created. And there you have it. So it's not immediately obvious, but if we go into edit mode and start moving the points of this curve, you'll see that our mesh is actually following the path. So let's select it and press L, L, I'm sorry, S to scale it. There we go. So this is pretty cool already in my opinion, but we can make it look more interesting. So if we go back into edit mode, let's see, there we go. Mm, let's add some more detail here. Something like this, I guess. And you'll see that detail is applied throughout our array. Excellent. We could actually do one more thing. We could actually apply a subsurface modifier to smooth out a lot of these edges, but uh, Blender's performance in 2.8 isn't very good. And the developers have said this themselves. So instead, I think we're gonna use a bevel because it's still gonna give us uh, that like smooth, smoothed out edges, without adding too much geometry. So let's go into our object right here. Let's add a bevel. Actually, we can keep the bevel. Yeah, let's just move it up a bit. Up, up. Yeah, okay, this is fine. So I'm gonna turn on my wireframe and I'm gonna set my bevel to angle. So it only applies to edges that are uh, above a certain angle. And now simply set this to hard and normals. And if we go back into object mode, you'll notice that it looks like our edges are smoothed out. If we like zoom out a little bit, 
but it's actually really lightweight because we didn't add any subsurface modifiers. And this is a technique commonly used in uh, video games, but it's not perfect because if you zoom in, you'll see that, I mean, I think you can see this right here, this little edge right here. We're not actually adding a ton of geometry. It's just the soft normals inside that bevel that makes it look smooth. So if you really want it to look a little better, but you still don't want to add a subsurface modifier, then instead of just playing with hard normals, add uh, one or two more segments. And I think that's still going to be lighter than using an actual subsurf. Yeah, it looks fine enough. Let's make it a little bit tinier. Oops, too tiny. That's good enough. You know what? Let's create a second cable. So let's go, let's select this curve right here. You know what, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's stick to just one for now. Let's not overcomplicate this. I, I just thought of something else we can do to this cable. We can add a little bit of a twist. And I do prefer Maya for doing this, you know, because you can control the twist with just a secondary curve. But here we actually have to add another modifier. So let's add simple deform and it's going nuts because it's in the wrong axis. So set this to Z and let's see, let's turn up our twist to something higher. And it's still freaking out. And that's because we're also applying the twist to the curve. We only want to apply it to the geometry. So that means we're going to move this up. There we go. And I don't know if you can see, but it's twisting around and we can just increase this value as much as we want to get that twist. But I think that's a little too high. I'm going to keep it at 300. Okay, so now we can actually add another curve that looks just like this one. So if we press Shift D, we can duplicate this curve. And if I select the geometry and press Alt D, so Alt D, what that's going to do is going to give me an instance of the geometry. Okay. Now it's just a matter of going back into the uh, curve modifier for this little part and setting it to follow this new curve. So where is this curve? Let's delete this and select our second path. So it's not following it exactly. So let's actually apply our location. It doesn't have any. It does. Okay, you know, instead, let's just set this to zero. So it's centered. And let's apply the location with control A of our curve. This is like freezing transformations in Maya. There we go. Okay, so now each curve is controlling each uh, set of geometry independently. So I can select this curve, select all the points, move them over here, then maybe make this sort of wrap around each other. <laughs> or whatever you want to do. Whoops. That looks good enough. And because these are instances of each other, we can always go back into edit mode and I actually can't see what's going on. So let's disable the deformer and the bevel. Okay, so it's a little bit more clear what's happening. Okay, this. So now let's add a little bit more details. So let's do this, some basic stuff. Whoa, that, why is that so bright? I don't know. The point is to just add more detail. Something like that. Cool. And you'll see it's going to update across all the elements in this curve and our instanced curve as well. So I have an idea. I don't know if this is actually going to work, but let me actually hide all of this junk I don't need. I don't need the cursor. I don't need the origins. Beautiful. So let's actually go back into this curve, not this one. Oh, they're the same. Okay. 
let's turn everything off again. This, this, I, I don't want to see it in edit mode. Okay, so let's add some geometry while we're in edit mode. Let's add a cylinder, scale it down. way down cool hmm. let's make this a little taller whoops scale z we don't need these top faces Give it some subdivisions. Excellent. So by doing that, we now have this like little tube of geometry that's twisting along our little cable. In fact, we can increase the twist. Where is this? So it's a little bit more obvious. So now both the geometry and this little tube is twisting because I created that cylinder inside of uh, inside of the mesh, you know, while it was in edit mode. So it's basically, these two are the exact same. Uh, they're a single mesh, in other words. So that's pretty neat. And I feel like I went a little too far with uh, the details here, but <laughs> I don't know. So let's create some more. Let's actually swap this, extrude this. And then scale this in, I don't know what axis this is. Y? No, X? Okay. Excellent. Extrude and then scale with individual points and then bridge these faces. Yeah, we took this a little too far. <laughs> what can we do next? Oh, I know what to do. Let's actually change the mat cap. So let's set this to something like this. Wait, this piece is, doesn't have a uh, smooth normals. Oh, there we go. So let's do that. And then let's also turn on cavity. And make it a little more intense. Wow. Yeah, we definitely went a little bit overboard, but it doesn't matter. The, as a demonstration, it works just fine. So let's actually select this piece right here and scale it and make it a little bit thinner so it's less distraction. And let's also select our curves. Can we rotate these? No, can we go into edit mode and rotate? Awesome. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. I added a little too much detail. If you're making a cable, you probably want to make it a little more simple. And instead of making these little uh, tube thingies that I created as part of this mesh, I probably should have made a separate cable so that I can control the twist of uh, each piece of geometry independently. I don't know if that makes sense, but let's just mess around. Whoa, no, I do not want to do that. Let's set this to a different, but yeah, you get the idea. Hopefully you enjoyed.